may we have the confession of faith. Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen. May we all greet one another. May you, believer, be the main figures of the three onlys. Do you know the three movements? It's the Star 10,000 movement, 4,000 Bartism movement, and the 237 healing movement. May we be the main figures of this. Even if you say, give me, give me, there will no be, not be answers. Who receives answers? It is those who have their direction according to the will of God. Then, even if you don't ask, he will give it to you. You don't have to ask God for the petty things because it is fitting to God. What is fitting to the heart of God? With that, the title for today is Paul's Strategy to Raise the Bartizan. Last week, the leader remnant retreat was held under the theme, The Leader of Watchmen. And this week, the main conference of the World Remnant Conference is taking place with the theme, 25-Hour Remnant Bartizan. So right now, we're keep on talking about the Bartizan. For the leaders retreat, it was the five Bartizans, the covenant, vision, the dream, the Bartizan of eternity, I, image. What is the image? It is breaking down the forces of darkness in the field. And lastly, P, heavenly power, thronely power, eternity power. Let us fulfill it. What is all that is in common? It is raising the Bartizan with the CVDIP. Having the word, may you be able to implement the word in the field and raise the works of saving souls. It's saying, let's evangelize. Did you receive grace? Did you receive salvation? If you really receive salvation, may you be able to speak of the news of salvation to whoever you meet. It's not knocking on doors by force, but upon the meetings, upon who you meet. Let's say you meet a person on the bus or in the bank. That's the life of raising the Bartizan. Then God will be responsible. The main conference is being held per town nationwide, having Tegohana Church as the main town. The event starts with an opening ceremony on Tuesday, and the message will be proclaimed intensively from Wednesday to Thursday, and remnant night will take place on Friday at Deco Exco, accommodating up to 15,000 people, so anyone can attend by pre-registering. Since our church is assigned as the regional town conference, we will open our main hall and all the remnants and churches will gather here. Thus, all the church members are encouraged to come to the church together in this hot weather with the AC with the children and listen to the messages. For those who cannot attend in person, all the WRC World Remnant Conference schedules except for the Remnant Night will be broadcasted online. So you can listen to it online. For those who want to listen, there will be a way. It's a matter of fact of if you want to listen or not. Even if you attend, if you don't want to listen to it, it will be of no use. So I hope you listen to the messages online with the heart of willingness. The WRC 
is the biggest spiritual festival in our denomination. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, we were unable to gather together for some time, but after three years, we are resuming the conference to continue the previous spiritual momentum and activate it more than before. Even if the seeds are very close together and clustered, the message where it's very difficult to understand, the remnants are sitting there with their notes. So I thought, wow, it's completely different from our age. There will be the summit to save the age. I hope that all members of Yohan Church will participate in the 26th WRC and follow the one stream of the spiritual schedule together. The global British demographer, Professor David Coleman of the University of Oxford, has forecasted that due to the low birth rates, South Korea could become the first country to face extinction. Korea has the lowest birth rate. He also stated that if the current rate continues, there is a risk of the nation's extension by the year 2750. We are in that danger. To that extent, our nation is in a low birth rate crisis. However, it is not only the biological issue of low birth rates that is a concern. There is also a significant spiritual low birth rate problem within the Korean churches. According to an announcement from the representative denominations in our nation, nearly half of the churches do not have Sunday schools. Their European churches were like that. And then middle school, high school, college, young adults will decrease and the church's doors close. I went to Russia and there was a church that was a thousand years old and it was a very big church. And the choir was all the way in the third floor. And how many people are sitting there? about a hundred people, but the congregation had all white hair in their 70s to their hundreds. So they probably went to church since they were young. There was no black hair. So of course the doors will close soon. Statistics show that more than 80% lack infant Sunday schools. 80%. They don't even have infant Sunday schools. We have prenatal. After prenatal, it's infant. But they don't have that. So the situation has become more severe by the COVID-19 pandemic. So the Korean church does not consider Sunday schools to be closed, but nearly ruined. However, we are currently in the position to completely reverse this spiritual stream. You saw the news for Yohan News. The remnants are in the uproar. They are so passionate. They are praising in the front. You always see it, so do you think, oh, it's like that? Go to the big churches, not the small churches because they don't have it. The remnant movement is becoming increasingly active, and as we face the age of the three-day weekend, although you may not be interested, if the gospel is not proclaimed, 
even if they rank first place in their class, there will be clear evidence that the, they will be in more trouble. But the remnants standing in the three summits will be racist leaders of this age. You must experience how tremendous this blessing is. May you be able to pray in tears. May you take interest. Many people, they are too concerned of what to eat and what to wear, so they don't have the spiritual interest. Those who were used by God, they were in the background of the prayers of the parents, and they will succeed. Moreover, there should be a covenantal challenge to firmly establish the partisan of the gospel in the field of spiritual low birth rates. The word of the book of Acts chapter 14 that we'll look in today records the final of the first missions journey of Apostle Paul. It is written how Paul and Barnabas were preaching the gospel as they left Pisidon Antioch. Please look at the map displayed on the screen. So you can see that Syria, which was Syria in the Bible back then. And then he was on this journey, and the green is the first mission's journey, going from Antioch, Lystria, and Derbis, and then Antioch, and then coming back to Antioch again. And this was the first mission's journey of Paul. May you look at this flow. So the first mission's journey of Apostle Paul began in the Antioch church in Syria as they traveled to Cyprus and visited Pisidia, Antioch, Iconium, Lystria, and Derby. And then we tracked their journey back on the way to Antioch in Syria. Through the mission's journey, we can have the answer to how Apostle Paul established the baptism of Christ in the field. Through today's word, may you be able to see how he raised a church that will be continued, the regional church, not something that will be put to an end, but raising the disciples, having the unity, So you must have this answer. Paul did not just go on a vague voyage. Wherever he went, he raised a partisan. Dear today's word, I bless you in the name of the Lord, that may all members of your own church become the absolute disciples of Christ as you follow the strategy of establishing Paul's partisan and creating the dynamic life in the field. So we have missionaries here from Kenya, Palawan, and our missionary Chung Min Shi. As he's going around, he's not just coming back and forth, but wherever he goes, he's raising the partisan of Yewon Church, and that's how we can help him. So it's not any other motive. It's that we can share the spiritual stream to raise the continuous partisan. So we're doing this role of helping each other in doing so. And that's why we commissioned him. So with this mission in front of God, with the strategy of raising the partisan like Paul, it must start. So number one, boldly preaching the gospel. Verse one reads, now at Iconium, they entered together into the Jewish synagogue and spoke in such a way that a great number of both Jews and Greeks believed. When Paul and Barnabas went 
to their missions field, they first priorly entered the synagogues of the Jew. And back then, it was that the Jews were to receive salvation first. It was that tradition. This extends from the apostles' tradition that acknowledged the priority of reaching out to the Jewish people with the gospel of salvation. Paul stated this in Romans 1.16, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jews first and also to the Greek. There was also a principle of testifying the gospel to the Jews. However, when they, when we look at this more deeply, in the missions aspect, the Jewish synagogue is an important contact point. So Paul enters into this field first. In other words, the Jewish synagogue is a full first golden fishery in an empty place at the same time. The Jewish people lived a synagogue-centered life, and the synagogue served as a platform for worship and education for posterity. So it's like that right now, too, but they have a different neighborhood. They make that neighborhood to be very rich and expensive. It's by setting up the synagogue. It's like that right now and then. It's for the posterity and it's the platform for the future generation. At the worship they gave in the synagogue, they first gave praise to God, recited the Shema, which consists of Deuteronomy 6, 49, 11, 13 to 12, 21, Numbers 15, 37 to 41, and gave prayers which contains 18 prayers. Afterwards, they would read from the two books of the Old Testament, one from the Law and one from the Prophets in order. Then, among those attending the gathering, the synagogue leader would select appropriate individuals to speak to if there were any well-known people, special guests, or those who requested to address the congregation. The selected individuals would have the opportunity to share their understandings, interpretations, or teachings related to the readings to deliver speeches expressing their thoughts. And that was the order of the worship in the synagogue. So how effectively could Apostle Paul, who could be said to be the master of the Old Testament, testify the gospel? Would, we, would he lose hold of this opportunity? Every time he had the opportunity to preach the gospel, he came out and explained the gospel. It was like a fish who met the water. He would have preached the gospel with a lively, dynamic spirit, much like a fish finding water. Indeed, evangelism and missions requires utilizing points of contact, which is truly crucial. Paul made use of most of the conditions he had. As we are building a system of the 237 missions and taking one step at a time, it is essential to realistically share the contact points for missions. You must share it overseas if you have those contact points. The 7.5 million Korean diaspora living abroad can serve as significant contact points for missions. Your family, friends, and colleagues can all become doors. There is no coincidence. May we not live for our benefits. Business and individuals can be points of contact through trade and industry in each country. Therefore, when holding country-specific gatherings, prayer forums are essential, but we also need practical contact points in forums. If a nation has been assigned to me through the drawings, I can communicate that information 
to the elders of the 27 elders of that country. Finding the opportunity to preach the gospel, looking at that environment, situation, and encounters from a missionary perspective, you'll be able to see the contact points for missions. This is the will of God. This is the wish of God, and we are the ones who has that. We can preach the gospel. There is a person who needs to receive the gospel. That heart, that posture, that's what is important. In today's passage, we see that when Paul preached the gospel in the synagogue, a great number of Jews and Greeks believed. Whenever the gospel is proclaimed, the darkness is broken down and the history of life erases and the kingdom of God expands. It is because the gospel carries the power of God. However, at the scene where the gospel is proclaimed, there is also another response. As mentioned in verse 2, there are those who opposed the gospel. In the passage, some Jewish adversaries did not only reject the gospel for themselves, but also stirred up others, causing them to hold ill feelings. At the moment, Paul and Barnabas did not respond emotionally, but dealt with it spiritually. Verse 3 reads, so they remained for a long time, speaking boldly for the Lord. This statement indicates that they boldly proclaimed the gospel of Jesus Christ. And the gospel is to be proclaimed boldly, not hesitantly. It is not being hesitant, as the Greek word for preaching is kerygma. It contains the meaning of proclamation. It's not holding yourself back. Proclamation. It means to proclaim the entrusted message with authority. That is evangelization. Don't worry about how others may react. Don't take interest in that. We have no responsibility for what happens after we proclaim the gospel. Those destined for gospel and salvation will believe. God's time schedule may not be the right timing for some and some individuals may not be destined for salvation. It's not that you did not pray or have a lack of faith. Do not be deceived by Satan's trickeries. The important thing is to proclaim the gospel boldly without hesitation. You don't have to be responsible for the result. God will be responsible. That is how I did my walk of faith. Whether that person receives scars, trials, or not, all I did was proclaim the gospel. And you are those who survived. So whatever I say, you have received 30 years of training so you will not fall into trials. It's not falling into trials by people's words taking interest in the words of man and being happy when you're complimented. God is not interested in that. The demons know this well. The important thing is to proclaim the gospel boldly without hesitation. In today's passage, verses 5 to 7, because the evidence arose in the field, Hostile Jews gathered their strength to attempt to mistreat and stone Paul and Barnabas. So it's strange when a person is determined to receive salvation, it's not how you say it, but those who will receive grace will receive grace. Oh, but the pastor has such a heavy diet 
conflict. I can't understand. You'll get used to it. Just give it six months. So when they found this, they fled to Lystra and Derby. The interesting part is that they went to near places in Lystra and Derby to share the gospel. It is a non-stop evangelism camp of the gospel. The non-stop gospel movement. In the gospel movement, how can there be any stop? How can there be a break, a vacation in the gospel movement? You may have vacations, but may you go and have the gospel movement. However, Satan's attacks were also relentless and persistent. The hostile Jews came to Antioch and instated the crowd to stone Paul. Verses 90 to 21 reads, But Jews came from Antioch and Iconium, and having persuaded the crowd, they stoned Paul and dragged him out of the city, supposing that he was dead. But when the disciples gathered about him, he rose up and entered the city, and on the next day he went on with Barnabas to Derbe. When they had preached the gospel to that city, he had made many disciples, and they returned to Lystra and Iconium and to Antioch. From their perspective, they thought Paul was dead, as they dragged him outside the city. However, Paul rose up. It was a temporary loss of consciousness from being stoned, but they thought he was dead. Perhaps it was because his body was covered in blood. However, what is astonishing is that Paul, despite being in such a wounded state, did not return in any other way, but run, and he did not run away as soon as he got up, but went back to the city, and on the next day he went to Derbe preaching the gospel and making many disciples. He was unstoppable. For those who receive salvation is like this. Those who know heaven and hell. Those who are with God. Apostle Paul risked his life establishing the baptism of Christ in the field. He was truly an amazing evangelist. It's not that he was a spectator going around. He was preaching the gospel, risking his life. He is a model of the life of the evangelist itself. Having life means that you have a mission. I don't know anything. I don't have any power. Don't say anything that is so pessimistic because living, it means that you have a mission. Because if you are done with your mission, you will quietly go. My mother, my father, look at my family. It's like that. If the mission ends, it's like that. Because they did their best in doing so. Our life is not to live multiple lives, but one life. It doesn't matter how long you live. being in the hospital beds of old age and having Alzheimer. What good is that? There is no one who was bored in my family. Everyone was so quick-tempered. Cleanly, may we be able to go to God in the mission field. That is my prayer. It is one life that we have. In this one and only life, don't you want to give everything, just like Apostle Paul, for the sake of the Lord, going all in? The amens are all fading down.
Don't you want to go all in? It's the word of God. I hope all members of you in church will live a walk of faith of seeing the end. You must be able to see the end. That is the success DNA. That is the life of the CVDIP. All members of Yohan Church, I bless in the name of the Lord to establish the partisan of the gospel in the field, courageously and fearlessly, like Apostle Paul. And may he stand as a disciple, summits of the sage. Number two, the indisputable spiritual nurturing, verses 21 to 23. Derby was the final destination of Paul's first mission journey. However, instead of returning directly to Antioch from Derby, he revisited the areas where he had preached before. He did team ministry in those places to strengthen the hearts of the disciples who were established in the evangelism fields and encouraged them to remain strong in their faith. This means that he helped their faith to be rooted deeply and not be shaken. Simply speaking, he nurtured them. Do not be shaken. People will say this and that. When he goes, he evangelizes. When he comes back, he nurtures. In the field where the gospel has been proclaimed, the baptism was established, making it firm ministry of nurturing. Colossians 2, 67 reads, Therefore, as you receive Jesus Christ, the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. This is what nurturing is. Nurturing not only holds onto the wavering thoughts, but also helps a person establish roots of faith so that they can stand on their own to win over no matter what hardships may come. Apostle Paul carried out the nurturing ministry established the roots of the gospel in the regions where he had proclaimed it during his mission journey. Additionally, he was when he was in prison, he was unable to physically move, so he provided spiritual nurturing through letters. Paul wrote a total of thirteen letters in the form of epistles. Nine from nine of them were sent to the churches, and four were sent to the individuals. These letters make up about half of the New Testament, following the order of the Bible. They start with the book of Romans, containing the essence of the gospel, and continuing to, to Philemon, which are Paul's epistles. In fact, the value of Paul's letters is so great that without them, proper ministry and nurturing would be challenging. They serve as spiritual nurturing letters, guiding us to live gospel-centered lives, alignment with God's plan and will. Why do we do evangelism camps? It's to firmly establish roots of the gospel, just as Paul did. It's about fortifying the partisan of the gospel in the field and to save many people. The theme of three, the three movements are the same. It's a ministry where we unite as one rooting down into the gospel together and it ensures that new believers and long-time absentees are nurtured properly until the end. Spiritual nurturing is not a task of a single individual, but it requires the collective effort of everyone because it is a spiritual battle. Satan so relentlessly attacks to hinder our stand, but a team of three and the three movements is a, is a temporary version of Paul's strategy to build the partisan and the sage. Mm -hmm. 
So may all the believers of Yewon Church firmly believe that the team of three and the three movements are God's time schedule of actors. And I see reports of how many people have come back to the church due to the team of three. From start to right now, it's about 63 to 65 percent every week. 90 percent of people are not interested. Only about 10 or so people are interested. And most of people are losing hold of this blessing. Evangelism, evangelism is a multi-blessing. You're not interested, so you lose hold of this multi-blessing and living difficult lives. May you not live difficult lives, but have this team of three. It's the time schedule of God. So in the name of the Lord, may you commit yourselves and go all in, focus and stand as the pioneers of the contemporary answers to this era. This is the conclusion. The renowned Michelle Algist Herbert Kane said, thinking of doing missions is alone a sin before God. Doing missions alone. He saying that he can do it alone. The statement applies not only to missions, but to all of God's work. The moment that we can think that we can do it alone, we fall into the pit of Genesis chapter 3, 6 and 11. They are bounded by Satan, my, by doing it alone. May all believers of Yohan Church erase the thought of doing it alone. God's work is about doing it together with principle, not saying, I'm going to do it. God's not fond of that. God knows and man knows. Oh, he's saying that only he's great. Who wants to be with that person? It's the with principle, being together. We can see that even Apostle Paul always built partisans together on the field. Starting from the team of three, may every department, committee, and district become one team. In the name of the Lord, may all the believers of Yohan Church become the main figures of the three movements, writing the stream of oneness in the pulpit, firmly establishing Christ's partisan in the field, being able to pray and having one heart sharing the stream of the pulpit and in the field may we be able to raise the partisan and be the main figures of the three movements let us pray dear father god may all the believers of your church life be the strategy of paul raising the partisan in the field upon the two thirds of nations and the countries we have chosen the countries with the elders, the senior deaconesses, young adults, college students, and the remnants. May we be the main figures of this movement and have the answer of 24-25 hours and be able to raise the partisan that God wants in our lives. In Jesus Christ's name we pray, Amen.